Hello and welcome to another Atypical in Philosophy video with myself, Jonathan M.S. Pierce. I'm going to have a little talk to you uh, about something on the back of my previous video, which is looking at the demographic shift in the UK uh, as a particular example. But I think you'll find this is the case to some degree in America and other Western nations, which is demographic shift towards non-religiosity in, in populations. And we are seeing... Christianity receding, certainly in the UK, uh, and non-religiosity becoming the main uh, worldview in certain younger age groups in the UK. That is now the largest uh, sort of religion, if you like, or non-religion in this case. I guess worldview is probably the best term in the under 40s. OK, so that that is a really big shift, demographically speaking. But then on the back of that, I want to just have a talk about uh, my children, really. And are they missing out on true Christmas? We've just had, it's January now, it's a new year. Christmas is, is long gone and we're counting down to the next one. But uh, I'm a fully fledged secular atheist, right? So I'll, that's my position, philosophically speaking. But I do love Christmas, right? And it's, it's probably a learned thing involving decades of sort of cultural normalisation following a, a childhood ensconced in, I guess, at least nominally Christian Christmas tradition, right? So even as a kid, I wouldn't have been necessarily thinking all the time about the true meaning of Christmas, but I would have been loving the whole Christmas thing. Um, I, Like many people, people of my era you know I spent Christmases at school singing carols and hymns getting involved in the traditional rituals I guess you could call them of of the Christian winter solstice celebrations uh, I went to the old midnight mass and participated in Christingle celebrations in candlelit school cloisters I mean that's benefit of going to a private boarding school I guess you do things like that and watch your choir dressed up in cassocks, walking around with candles shoved in oranges and singing religious songs. But even at the, watching all that fed into my sense of, of culture, I guess, uh, and my sense of society and understanding of, of things that I can't really put my finger on, which is why I'm using the word things, you know, became part of part of. I don't know, the cultural baggage, I, I guess, I take around with me. Now, as I say, at the time, I wouldn't have been looking at those cloistered choir choristers walking down, uh, sorry, the, the cassocked choristers walking down the cloisters. I wouldn't have looked at them and gone, oh, yeah, and Jesus this and that and that. I would have been, like, probably going, oh, that's that's interesting. God, I wouldn't want to be in a choir. Oh, I can't wait to get back to the house so I can start like doing X, Y, and Z, and then singing a bit of a song. Like I wasn't in in the Christian zone. Some kids would have been, on, uh, I assume, but for a lot of people, it's just part of like the atmosphere of Christmas. You go to midnight mass. Yeah, I might have said a bunch of prayers. What was, was I really? Yeah, at the time when I was up until seventeen, I would have been. Like Christian, I would have called myself a Christian, but was I really understanding what was going on? Was I really in the zone for those prayers, or was I just repeating these ritualistic mantras? You know. Anyway, I digress. So the other evening, I was uh, prompted to sing along with a Christmas song. I, I can't remember. I mean, they said the other evening. This is like three weeks ago or something a carol or hymn that was on tv something like that and one of my twins looked at me oddly he says uh, and, I, and i said to him like don't you know this carol haven't you sung this at school and he's like uh no uh, and this is on the back of an experience from a week before that where you know wham's last christmas was playing and uh, you know because christmas uh and i told my twin 12 year olds you know up until relatively recently I thought that instead of saying or singing this year to save me from tears, I gave it to someone special. He was actually singing this year on the semi frontiers. I gave it to someone special, like as if George Michael's the semi frontiers doesn't even make sense. Right. As if George Michael was like 
exploring and fighting out in the worlds, but you know, not quite so wild. The, the frontiers, but the semi frontiers, and he gave his heart away there. Um, and then, of course, that started a conversation about misheard lyrics. And a further one of mine is quite a, a popular one. In fact, I think Lee Herring did uh, not Lee Herring, Richard Herring, the comedian, British comedian, did a um, a comedy tour called Lord Lord of the Dance Seti or something like that. But anyway, I I I used to think the the lyrics to the famous uh, British. Him, I don't know if it's sung in American places. It's just dance, then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I thought the said he was actually seti, like a sofa. Like dance, then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, seti. And I had to explain to my children, you know, what the seti meant and that that I was singing the wrong lyrics. And I imagine Jesus was dancing on the on the sofa in front of his disciples, right? Uh, and I said, you know, of course, that's stupid, right? I mean, you know the hymn, yeah? You know the, what the proper words are. And they're, like, looking at me blankly. Uh, and it was completely lost on them because they don't sing hymns, right? They go to a, a non-denominational school where and have done previously where they occasionally sing, like, hymns in collective worship or in, in assembly at school. Right. And they'll be taught the odd hymn here and there as a kind of like lip service to Christianity. Uh, and interestingly, in the last video, I talked about how that is actually a statutory requirement, collective Christian collective worship in the UK on a daily basis. So they, they do know some songs, but really it's kind of missing on them. And then I, got, I started thinking, is, is, is there something to this? Like my children in their modern secular lives are not experiencing prayers and rituals and buildings, you know, churches and songs, uh, the same sort of things that I experienced in my, albeit nominal, Christian upbringing. It's not the rabid fundamentalist religiosity of certain sort of communities in the US, okay. It's the quaint Church of England experience of, you know, singing dirges on a Sunday morning, punctuated by the occasional uplifting quick tempo hymn like lord of the dance or onward christian soldiers i used to sing that i used to love singing that at school and used to give an extra sibilant s you used, used to sing onward christian soldiers and like all the school would do that and at the time we had this oh, what was his name i can't remember he was previously a pilot in world war Two and got shot down he's like a spitfire pilot and he was really officious like uh, school chaplain and he would go absolutely nuts at us singing like that anyway that's just a random memory came back to me there um you know and you get these you get these stirring songs like jerusalem which is part of like the british cultural baggage the english cultural baggage you know the william blake lyrics um put to stirring music uh, but anyway, you know, my children don't know any of those songs, right? And I may get, like on Remembrance Sunday, hearing Jerusalem being sung or singing Jerusalem, you know, and you get shivers down your back. Uh, and and like, they, don't, they don't have that, right? And they haven't experienced any of that. They haven't sat in a variety of aged churches, church buildings, you know, taking a kneeler from, from the pew in front of them, from the back of the pew in front of them, to kneel for prayers that they knew by heart. They haven't sung hymns that would sear themselves into the cultural memories of, uh, of, of, of themselves. They haven't experienced Christmas songs sung by carolers or choirs echoing off sandstone walls in a weather-beaten holy house. You know, this is generally not in their repertoire of experiences and their own songs will stick with them audibly etched into their consciousnesses but there'll be generic songs you know pop songs of culture and even materialism you know um lacking that kind of historical or locational or cultural well they that is a sort of culture isn't it but that you know that the, they will lack i don't know you could call it even a religious um sense so historical locational religious sense they will lack those things and the question then becomes so what you know 
are they any the worse for that? It's, it's the kind of thing where it's like, you know, I experienced that, therefore you should, you know. Uh, am I any better or any more rounded for having experienced that? Am I a more cultured human being for having these experiences as part of my cultural DNA? Uh, you know, the ego chauvinist in me thinks that perhaps they are lacking something, that they are replacing my experiences with cheaper, tackier stand-ins, possibly. But as an atheist, of course, I'm not yearning for a lost theology or spirituality that I took part in, uh, because it was never that for me. But at most, yeah, at most, I, be I became a Christian adolescent who had such a bastardized understanding of Christianity and Christian theology that it's pretty much embarrassing when I look back on it now. Uh, but when I sang those songs and took part in those Christian traditions, there was rarely a, any interaction with actual Christian theology. It's just, as I keep saying, part of this cultural baggage. So uh, in that sense, they were just nice songs in a quaint cultural setting, perhaps. So is this really more about nostalgia for me and, and that sense of nostalgia getting the better of me? in demanding that my children or wondering whether my children should have those experiences themselves. I remember a few years back, Michael Gove, who is who was then the Tory education secretary in the UK, and he changed the curriculum. Was, and I was teaching at the time, and it's hugely controversial. So he's getting children to remember poems off by heart. As part of the curriculum because he learned them off by heart and look how good it was for him and look where it got him it, i did it and i'm all right therefore you should do it and that was his approach to changing the education system in some aspects and it was it was really controversial but is there is there an element of that here which is like well look at me i'm all right it did me well and i've got i feel like i've got the this fulfilled existence where, where i've got this kind of cultural baggage that i'm taking around with me that i i i heap value on you should have that same baggage is there some intrinsic or extrinsic value to the christian christmas traditions or even the wider cultural projects of singing such songs sitting in such places partaking in such rituals you know do they have value in and of themselves or do they have value in other things they bring you Either way, are they things that my children should experience or other children should experience? But then again, is that just rose-tinted glasses? Am I forgetting the hours of fidgeting, sat bored in uncomfortable seating, wondering what all this nonsense was about, and more likely thinking about anything else other than that? You know, I remember back, oh, I remember singing those songs, but all the bits in between, I was bored, senseless. Right? I'd be fidgeting around in the pews just thinking about anything else other than you know the the death and resurrection of jesus and the vicarious atonement of, of human sins you know because i didn't understand that it was just not part of part of my brain setup uh, and part of my thought patterns it was just yeah it was beyond me and therefore these lovely cultural experiences are cherry-picked memories of stuff that was otherwise you know not very enjoyable arguably so i don't know lots of questions uh i'd be really interested to see what you think is is it is there something in this are uh, modern secular children missing out on experiences that that are ex experiences that are necessary are they you know should they have them is it nice to have them or are their experiences they have just as valid? Am I in in talking about how wonderful certain experiences I had were, and there's an argument as to really whether they were wonderful, am I forgetting that their own experiences have their own value for them? And they might be, you know, have just as much value as the experiences I'm extolling the virtue of. I don't know. Lots of questions, as ever, you know. Uh, in trying to answer certain questions, I ask more. What do you guys think? Tell me about your experiences of, you know, these kind of Christian or religious cultural um, contexts, and whether you you look back on them as as an atheist now and go, 
yeah, they were still really useful or whether you look back on them and they go, oh my God, they were boring and what a waste of time. How, how do you interpret them? And if we don't replace them with, you know, if we, if, if we don't ask our children to experience those things, what would we want them to experience instead? Are, are there like secular, you know, things like the Sunday assembly is a way of experiencing that kind of thing in a secular environment. So, you know, is are there other ways to give children these sorts of experiences without the kind of Christian layers and and Christian rituals or, or whatever religion you might be talking about? You know, can we do these things in a secular way? Anyway, uh, thank you. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for all your support for the channel. Toodle pips, and I will speak to you later.